Hi, my name is Chris Clark. I'm a cloud solutions specialist with FlexManage, and today we're going to be talking about Azure AD Join and Workplace Join. Azure AD Join and Workplace Join are directly related to Windows 10. Uh, Windows 10 was one of the first operating systems by Microsoft to be primarily designed for the cloud. So these capabilities like Azure AD Join, providing single sign-on, um, kind of present the user with a new world uh, in order to take advantage of some of the existing technologies you might have with Office 365 and EMS. First, we'll be starting off with a overview of Azure AD Join and Workplace Join. Then we'll look at the out-of-box experience. Uh, there's also going to be a demonstration on Azure AD Join and Workplace Join. Azure AD Join is, is designed for Windows 10. What it allows you to do is really take any off-the-shelf Windows 10 PC and bring it into your corporate environment as a managed device. It does require Windows 10 professional, enterprise, or education versions. But what this allows you to do is Azure AD Join a, a Windows 10 device to provide single sign-on for on-premise and cloud applications. Also, you can enroll directly into MDM, like Microsoft Intune, and it has full support for hybrid environments. Azure AD Join is used in conjunction with uh, conditional access, which is part of the enterprise mobility and security suite. What it allows you to do is, again, take that Windows 10 device off of the shelf, have it Azure AD Join, also enroll into Intune, and by enrolling to Intune, you can meet certain conditions, like being a managed device. So within the slide, we can see that there's different conditions that can be matched in order to gain access to corporate resources in the cloud or even on-premises using the Azure AD application proxy. So some of the capabilities of Azure AD Join include SSO to cloud and on-premises applications. So to provide a more fluid sign-on experience for uh, Office 365, there's the Azure RMS tracking portal, there's the uh, My Apps Gallery that's part of enterprise mobility and security, and Microsoft keeps expanding these capabilities to more SSO applications. What it also allows you to do is enroll into Intune, and by enrolling to Intune automatically, you can have items like health check, automatic BitLocker encryption, you can push down Wi-Fi profiles, uh, VPN profiles, enforce endpoint protection. Windows Information Protection is a brand new technology that allows you to protect applications within the Windows 10 operating system. So if you look at your Office applications, you can have separate policies to protect data within Microsoft Word, Outlook, PowerPoint, etc. You can enforce automatic updates and also look at conditional access pieces that we saw on the previous slide and even deploy software, for examples like MSI files. You can Azure AD join a Windows 10 PC a couple of different ways, and one of these ways is called the out-of-box experience. And what this allows you to do is literally take a computer out of the box and enroll it into Azure AD, while at the same time pushing down these policies, enrolling directly into Intune, and taking a off-the-shelf, out-of-the-box device and bringing it into a managed uh, state. So the screens for the uh, out-of-box experience uh, directly have these express settings when you were to say turn on the Windows 10 PC that you just uh, you know, got sent to you by your corporation or uh, even you know, purchase it from a, a third-party vendor. Uh, once you go into express settings, it's kind of asking you if you own this PC or your organization owns this PC. So in this example, my organization sent me this PC directly, so I'm gonna choose my organization. And now you'll see the new option, which is called Join Azure AD. So typically, you'd have a corporate PC that was already joined to a domain. You might have an image that's associated with that PC. It's deployed with your deployment tools. This is kind of a new way of thinking in that I took an out-of-the-box PC, and I'm going to join it directly to Azure AD, which is synced from my Active Directory using AD Connect. And that allows me to have access to these cloud and even on-premises resources without ever really touching the corporate network. 
The screen we're seeing here is asking for your work or school account credentials and what these typically are associated with are your Office 365 uh, account or your Azure AD account. So the password matches your password in Active Directory and right away you have this kind of single sign-on mentality directly to enroll into Azure AD. Once we're signed in with our Office 365 credentials, all the policies that we've enforced are pushed directly down to that unmanaged device, and now it becomes a managed device. Next, we're going to take a look at two Windows 10 PCs running Windows Enterprise 1607, or the anniversary update. These two PCs uh, represent two different users that are part of the Contoso Corporation, and what we'll see is true Azure AD join and also workplace join. So I'm logged into a Windows 10 PC that represents the PC that was sent to me as the user. What I want to do is go to the Start button. I'm going to go into Settings. And under Settings, there's an Accounts area. Again, this PC just represents pretty much an off-the-shelf or out-of-the-box PC that really has nothing to do with my corporate network. I'm on the work group itself. It's not joined to the domain. So we can see how we can take that type of scenario and bring it into a fully managed device that's also enrolled into Intune. So what I'll be accessing here is called Access Work or School under the account settings. And there's a connect to work or school area. So when I click on connect, I'm able to enter in my Azure AD credentials. Right away, this would be workplace join, which we'll see in the next demonstration. But because this device is completely off the network, I have joined this device to Azure Active Directory. Once I click on join the device to Azure Active Directory, it's going to ask me to log in with my work or school account. The work or school account again represents your Office 365 or Azure AD account. So I'm the persona Nicholas R and I'm going to type in my username, which is just Nicholas R at MOD 672. 067.onmicrosoft.com. Again, this is just a test tenant, but typically you would have your email address as your username and your Active Directory password that would be synced over to Azure AD, or possibly you might just um, exist really in Azure AD and only have an Azure AD password. So once I enter in my credentials, I'm joining this machine directly to Azure AD. So what will happen is, is I actually have multi-factor authentication set up uh, for this particular user. And this is tied to the Microsoft Authenticator app, which is on that user's phone. So I received a prompt in the Authenticator app to ask me to approve the sign-in. I just press verify, and now I've used multi-factor authentication to verify that I'm Nicholas R. So this is a, an extra feature above and beyond uh, just signing in or even Azure AD join, but it allows you to really prove that you're that user that's signing in and have an extra layer of security above that. So I'm gonna click on join here. And what's happening now is that joining to Azure AD registers the device within Azure AD, which we'll see later in the portal on the admin side of things, but it also enforces various uh, policies and configurations that can be pushed down from Intune. So Intune can push down BitLocker like we saw, Windows Information Protection. It's actually enrolling the device directly into Intune at the same time. You can have Wi-Fi profiles, you can have VPN profiles pushed down. So really taking that unmanaged device and truly making it managed. As you can see, I'm connected to Contoso, which is uh, again, the, just the name of our uh, demo tenant that we're working with. And my user, Nicholas R, is signed in. So once connected to Azure AD, I'm actually logging in with the same credentials. So before I really didn't have a username, it was kind of the out of box experience that had the local administrator username and password. But now at this point, I can create a more of a single sign-on environment and log in with my username and password that we use to join Azure AD. So by joining the device to Azure AD, uh, in the background what's happening is it's enrolling into Microsoft Intune and pushing down the various policies that I've set up in the Intune console. So effectively we've taken an unmanaged device and now it become a fully managed corporate device. So after joining my Windows 10 PC to Azure AD, I'm able to log in with my Office 365 or my EMS credentials. 
So again, this could represent your email address. So you've really presented kind of a single sign-on environment for the users. So I'm gonna log in with Nicholas R, you know, my on Microsoft account. And instead of logging in with kind of your legacy domain slash or a different type of username, you've presented that single sign-on environment for the user. They're able to use your email address to directly access their PC and all the corporate resources going forward. So as we're logging in, the device itself was joined to Intune in the process of Azure AD join. So that all happened on the background. What really all we needed to do was log in with our credentials. At the same time, all those policies would have been pushed through Intune or other conditional access policies can be enabled to, to prevent corporate access uh, only from managed devices. Now that I've logged in with Azure AD, I'm able to have some SSO capabilities that you really couldn't have unless you had ADFS. Um, so this was kind of an elaborate setup with multiple pieces of topology in order to have ADFS. Now you have very similar capabilities just by using AD Connect and Azure AD Join. So I have Microsoft Edge uh, opened up here and what I'm gonna do is browse to portal.office.com. So this is one of the sites that will allow you to have these single sign-on capabilities because the device is Azure AD Join. So when I browse to the site, typically you're going to see a username and password field to prompt you for credentials. And because of Azure AD Join, there's a, a trust built with Azure AD, which Office 365 is built on and I'm brought directly into the Office 365 portal. Again, I've taken that unmanaged machine and now I have managed access to my Office 365 resources. So I can go directly into email and the Outlook web app and I am off and running with my corporate resources that I didn't have access to when I received the device. So what we just saw there is considered true Azure AD join. Next, we're gonna see workplace join. Uh, they're very similar in many ways, but what workplace join is defined as is adding a work or school account to existing PC. So this could actually be a domain join PC or even a work group PC that we've seen. It's just that we'll add the workplace join from kind of a different area in the account settings under control panel. So we're logged into a second Windows 10 PC, and again, I'm logged in as a local user. I'm not logged in with any Office 365 or Azure AD credentials, but in this example, we're going to do workplace join and kind of compare it to Azure AD join, which we saw previously. I'm gonna click on the start menu, go into account settings, and under account settings, we have accounts. And under accounts, we have the same area of access work or school, and we're gonna click on connect. And when we click on connect, we had joined to Azure AD, which we saw previously, but also I can just set up a work or school account. So this is actually what's considered workplace join versus Azure AD join. So I'm gonna type in my credentials of Rosa L at mod 672.067.onmicrosoft.com. Again, this represents my uh, Office 365 user credentials, so typically the user's email address. Click on Next. I'm going to be presented with kind of the standard Office 365 login screen. I'm going to type in my password, and this user is also enabled for multi-factor authentication. So again, just like previously, I'm going to receive a prompt on my phone asking me to verify the authentication request. So I'm going to press Verify, and now I've verified that I'm that user. So very similar to Azure AD join in the background, the device itself is being registered to Azure AD. It has a different device state that we'll see later in the admin console, that being Azure AD join versus workplace join. But all the same policies that we previously had set up in Intune, auto enroll into Intune, all the features of single sign-on are all pushed down during the registration process. So now that the Windows 10 PC is workplace joined, I have the same single sign-on capabilities that we saw with Azure AD join. So when I click on Microsoft Edge, I'm gonna to browse to portal.office.com and instantly I'm brought into the portal without ever seeing an authentication prompt, basically the same that we saw with Azure AD join. So now I have access to all my corporate applications within Office 365 and I've presented a uh, single sign-on capability 
to all my cloud or on-premises applications. So we've just seen the user experience of Azure AD Join and Workplace Join. Now we're gonna take a look at the new Azure AD portal running in Microsoft Azure and how the devices are represented under the user properties. So I'm logged into portal.azure.com and Microsoft is slowly migrating all Azure Active Directory features to this brand new portal. Some of the features are still in Azure Classic which was manage.windowsazure.com, but soon enough, every feature within Azure Active Directory, including the ones we're looking at now, will be in this new portal. So if I look at the various services in Azure, we have Azure Active Directory, and we can see that this is our Contoso tenant with all the users that we've been referencing from the Windows 10 PCs, and I wanna take a look at the two users that we did Azure AD join and Workplace join. So I'm gonna click in the users and groups, and under users and groups, I can click on all users and search for the particular users I'm looking for. So Nicholas was the first user that did Azure AD join. And under Nicholas Rose, once I click into his username, we can see various details and various Azure AD properties. So one of these is devices. So when we did Azure AD join and also workplace join, the device itself was registering with Azure AD. So over to the right here, we can see that it's a Windows 10 PC and the trust type is Azure AD. So it's also compliant, which means it was enrolled into Intune automatically and you can see that it's managed by Intune. So now we'll take a look at Rosa L and compare the two different device settings. So I'll go back to users, remove Nicholas here and type in Rosa. Click in her user properties and under the same devices section, we can see the difference now. So we can see under the devices area for Rosa that there is the Windows 10 PC, but the trust type is Workplace Joined instead of Azure AD Joined. Uh, the device is still compliant as we can see and managed by Intune. So we can directly see the difference between the two types of Azure AD join and workplace join under the trust type area in the Azure AD portal. So today we've seen Azure AD join and workplace join. What these really allow you to do is take an unmanaged device, say it's out of the box or a device that was directly sent to you from your company and turn it into a managed productive device. Um, at the same time, enforcing your corporate policies, enrolling into Microsoft Intune and providing single sign-on capabilities. Now this is truly a whole new world of bring your own devices that Microsoft and the Enterprise Mobility Suite allow you to accomplish. Thanks for watching my presentation on Azure AD Join and Workplace Join. Um, again, my name is Chris Clark and you can reach me at cclark at flexmanage.com.